What's up guys? Welcome back to the ranch. All right, ranchers, what are we doing today? Well, we're about to embark on kind of a longer video. I'm, assu I'm assuming by the time I get this done, I'm here in my workshop and I need a cult packer because I'm going to try to do some no-till stuff with my food plots that I'm doing. And I want to do the whole buckwheat, grow, smash, plant kind of thing. Well, I need a cult packer to do that. And if you've been following along, you know I got that food plot in already. And um, it grew great, but now I need to do into the next season without having to constantly use the chemicals and stuff. So I want to put a cover crop in, buckwheat. I would love to purchase like a Packer Max or some sort of crazy cult of Packer, but they're a couple thousand bucks. So I've been researching online ways around it. Um, you know, with a board crimper where you would be stepping and board crimping sounds like a lot of work not something I really want to get into so uh, research a few things and I'm coming up with building your own cult packer and uh, you're gonna follow along as I do this I don't know if we're actually gonna come out to success or failure but for me it's all about a lot of the process a lot of doing things and I like that you stick along and watch me uh, on the ranch so this if this works out will probably be a thing you'll see uh, in the future on a lot of other things so it'd be really cool I'm keeping track of everything I'm spending and everything I'm doing to get an idea of what this is going to cost if you decide you wanted to go in and build this yourself so um, so far this is definitely looking like a cheaper option than buying a thousands of dollars or less than a thousand but more than five hundred dollar kind of cult packer which is what I'm seeing online are, are available options um, all right here we go let's get started wish us luck ranchers all right guys so what is our first step well you're gonna need about a dozen buckets so here are our buckets and uh, I'm sure they look familiar from a very well-known big box store uh, also we're gonna need some two by fours um, I have this bucket lid which is gonna come in handy later on down the road and uh, you're going to need some uh, adhesive there it is we're gonna need some adhesive like a liquid nail it's gonna hold some of these buckets together again two by fours I have uh, three eight foot two by fours and uh, also we're gonna need a small piece of uh, half inch plywood which I have laying around in my little workshop here of all sorts of stuff all right so step one buckets and let's remove all the handles all right for my next step I need to cut a hole right in this part of the bucket so I have the old DeWalt here and a bit to do that so let's get that done all right hole is cut like so on the back of this bucket all right right there's the shot boom all right so the next step we're going to cut a hole the same size i did on the bottom of the bucket in the middle of the top of the bucket i know you might be saying this makes little to no sense so far but i promise i'm going to bring it all around and this will start to make sense but this is the next step so let's make the hole on the top. All right, guys, for my next step, uh, I'm gonna take the original bucket lid and bucket with the hat that has the two and a half inch hole, put it off to the side because I don't wanna confuse it. And I wanna take my remaining lids and uh, I was gonna cut like a uniform cut in the same manner with the punch thing I got, the drill bit, take a four inch hole out, but I don't think that's gonna be big enough. I'm gonna go back to my original designs and uh, I wanna cut just a rough cut rough cut out of the bottom of the bucket in a circular fashion. I want to keep about an inch around the border of the bottom of the bucket and uh, that's going to come into play in a little bit. Uh, I'm going to drill a small hole just so I can get my little jigsaw into the hole and cut out this bottom shape. So this is what I'm looking for on the remaining of the buckets now. So let's get going. All right, so we're coming to the end. All the buckets have that about inch lip, except for our last one, which has the hole, the two and a half inch hole we bore through it. 
and that's here. So now I want to come up with a solution because I want corrugations the whole way up to this, this, but this needs to be the end still. So what I had to do is I had to take the remaining three buckets, put the third one on, mark it. It has to be below the top of the finish edge, cut the whole bucket. Then I did that again with the second one. Made a smaller piece, but again, it's below the top of the bucket. And then the last third bucket, boom, completely to the top flush edge, making corrugations the whole way down. This is going to be the basis of our cold capacitor. Stay tuned. All the buckets are now together as one. And the next piece of thing you're going to need is a two and a half inch PVC pipe, which I got here. And you put all the buckets together with your end and the lid with the hole. Run the PVC pipe through, and you can see where we're going. We have a nice four foot cult of packing implement here. Keep watching along, this build is going to move into the actual framework that's going to pull this behind my ATV next. All right, guys, moving on to day two of this build, um, and now we're going to start working on the frame to support the uh, actual cold to packing implement, the roller, if you will, that we built yesterday. So here's yesterday's roller. And as you can see, what I have laid out is two by four, four feet, or actually three inches short of four feet, because I have two by fours measuring two feet on either end. So we got four feet, well, actually three inches less than four feet because we have to subtract this piece of wood from the length of this and then two feet of two by four here. And now we're going to screw them together. What I would suggest is have two drills because I like to pre-drill with one drill and then screw together with another drill. And that's what we're going to do. I'm going to take the roller out of the middle. Uh, let's do this because, uh, just wanted to give you where we're headed towards. And now I'm going to remove it out so I just don't damage it. All right, so the frame is all screwed together. And I decided to put the, the board that's going to be the front on the inside so that the screws would come across and it would pull across this board, which is going to be stronger than if you put it on the if you put it, say, this board on the outside and the screws are going in this way, it could just pull off when you're pulling this. So I didn't want to do that. This gives it more strength. But now, this is just a basic square, probably not that strong. So we're going to have to go to reinforcing this to pull the weight of a cold packer. Because I'm estimating when this job is done, we're going to have a couple of hundred pounds in that bucket implement we made. Um, so this has got to be strong enough to pull all that. So our next step is to cut some two by fours into three inch blocks. Well, three and a half inch, I correct myself. The next step is to cut these blocks into three and a half inch blocks. And we're gonna tuck them in in the same fashion in all four corners, like this. Like so, in four corners. And we're gonna screw those in one screw this way, because you gotta go between the two screws we put it, um, sorry, what one screw this side, one screw this side, and then we're going to do one screw on this side. Just to give this corner more strength. Also, you'll see where we're going. I'm going to add something else too for more strength coming up. So let's screw these in, and now you should be left with something like that screwed in. As I'm putting these in, I liked what happened with the first one, but I'm just going to take a moment and add something a little more to even strengthen further, which I'm a fan of. I'm going to use a, a wood glue, a type bond wood glue, and I'm going to put a, a little bead, a little quick zigzag on the inside and down the side here. So when that's in there, there's just more adhesive and more strength. Uh, it almost really helps to turn this into one solid block of wood, which is what I want. So uh, just a little, little tip there. Um, I wasn't a believer until I started using it, but it definitely helps strengthen stuff you're building. And again, I want this to be strong. Because, you know, most cult of factors, you'd see a frame made out of steel. We're doing this at, a, a, you know, $6.50 2x4s. So, let's uh, strengthen this bad boy up. All right. So, here is the existing screws. My blocks are in here with wood glue. And I'm putting two right into the block 
this way and I'm putting one into the block in the middle of these two screws coming like, you know, between the two of them here in the middle of this block on the inside here to hold the whole corner, as you can see, like that going in this way in the middle. And then I got another two coming in from the side over here. Um, I'm by no means a master carpenter. Oh my God, I'm sure there is some guy right now screaming at his computer screen or TV. Um, but this is my basic carpentry skills that I have. You know, I'm a, a black and decker low end tool guy, but I got a few tools and uh, this is what I'm doing. So here we go. Next step is I took the outside, outside two by four. And now we gotta make a bore a hole through this, right in the dead dead center of this two foot board, right in the middle. And it needs to fit our one and a quarter inch axle pipe that I bought uh, one and a quarter by 60 inch. This is probably the most expensive thing that I bought for this project, because this is gonna be your axle. It's aluminum, actually it's not aluminum, it's galvanized steel, I should say. So this is, uh, uh, one and a quarter by 60 inches. We're gonna have to cut it down because 60 is more than four feet wide, but uh, this is what worked for me. And uh, we need an uh, inch and a quarter hole inside our the middle of this two, two by four. So I have it marked out. And the exterior of that pipe is more than an inch and a quarter. So I have an inch and a half, which should be enough, uh, one of these bits to bore a hole. And we're going to bore two holes in the center of this thing. All right. Wish me luck. All right, guys, we hit a snag. Um, like I said, I'm no master carpenter. And, uh, you know, I'm doing this as, as I go, um, making it up, kind of not making it up. I mean, I've thought this out for over a year and uh, seen some things. But uh, this hole particularly that I told you to, to do here in the, the side of this two by four. I suggested the uh, one and a half speed bore because uh, we're using a two, a one and a quarter inch galvanized pipe as our axle. Um, I know the outside of the pipe is bigger than one and a quarter. I thought one and a half inch seemed like it was big enough. It was not. So, I mean, I have this, which is what I went to. This is a two inch bore. So 51 millimeters or two inch and that worked. So my hole, my hole had to be two inches, as you can see now, and uh, that's where we're at now for the next step here. So two inch hole, and uh, all right, let's keep on keeping on. So my next step was I took our two inch PVC pipe and I cut it to fit inside our frame, real tight and flush uh, between hole one, let's get the drill out of there, between hole one and hole two. And I just cut that on the miter box, this PVC pipe. So it has to fit tight and snug, tight and snug in there. So I have it just about snug. I mean, I wish I could have got a little snugger, but I mean, it's, it's touching on both sides. So that's what I want. And this is going to be not the axle because this one, this is going to be in our, in our buckets that we made. And this is going to act as our bearing and the steel pipe is gonna go through this. So let me give you a, a little preview to where we're headed. We got our buckets, we got our pipe. Now we're gonna lay this in here. So this kind of shows you where we're going. Now that's gonna go there and we're going to eventually, and we're gonna run this through the holes we just cut and this galvanized steel is gonna work as our axle through this PVC pipe through the buckets, and this PVC pipe is gonna act as our bearing. All right, let's keep going. So for my next step, I have the buckets inside this reinforced frame that we just made with the holes, two inch holes here for our, our pipe. And I have it set, kind of lined up, and I want to mark, um, I want to mark here on the edge of this board about how far out these buckets stick because I'm going to build some reinforcement here and I don't want it to get in the way of our buckets. So I'm going to just put a line here. 
Uh, this is a little bit rough kind of a situation, um, but this is part of my reinforcements for the back piece. And I'm going to do the same here. All right, for my next step, I had this little square, uh, you know, one by one by eight pine, and I cut it just on an angle to make two even triangles with. And now I'm going to come over to the back side and further reinforce with some screws and some glue two triangular pieces put right in the back corners from the marks we just made set in like that and I'm going to glue and screw them in glue and screw them in so now if you look that's not in the way of our roller and it's further reinforcing the back piece of our 2x4 implement so when it's starting to be pulled some of the pressure is going across not just this one one joint here but now some of the weight some of the weight that I put this in will be distributed through this board to over in this region, taking some of the stress off this, this point here. All right, screw that in, glue it and screw it. So I'm calling it a day here at the end of day two. And uh, we have our frame and we are reinforcing it. You can see the back triangle pieces are in. Again, those were kind of just rough cuts, but the idea is to get uh, piece in there so you strengthen up this joint here when you're pulling from the front uh, there's less stress there um, all right so that's what we're calling it a day for today so we're on day three of the build here and we're still strengthening up our our chassis for our roller that we're building the culture packer roller and uh, what we're gonna do is we'll have the axle coming through this this hole and when you stop and go and stop and go, it's gonna hit this, this two by four wood pretty hard. So what I saw someone do online, which is pretty awesome, so I can't take credit for, for this, is we're gonna drill a hole about an inch and a half, two inches back from the hole and in front of the hole and put in some bolts, some, la some carriage bolts and tightness so the wood doesn't split apart. And that's gonna be our strengthening step here. So we'll have one there, and we're gonna have one there. All right, let's get to drilling. We got our bolts in, as you can see, bolts, both sides of the axle hole to help strengthen up the board. Uh, we have our triangles in the back to help strengthen up the joints. And we have the blocks that we did in the earlier step. So now I think I'm gonna attach the tongue. So what I did was on the four feet in the front, found the center, marked it, and then I have our next two by four, and it's gonna go in the center. As you can see, I'm coming out to a length. The longer you would make this come out, the less pitch you'll have, you know, on your implement. You don't want it too pitched up, so just dragging the ass end in the ground, and you know, the longer out you make it, the farther away it is. I came up with 62 inches from here to the back end. 62 inches that's because it's going to fit in the back of my truck so I can transport it um, and I don't have to take anything apart that's what I'm going for that's also how I came up with four feet apart this will fit right in the back of my pickup and I'm all aces and that's what I want so I'm back in on the center I'm going to come in and put my two by four that gets me to 62 inches out um, the board itself is not 62 inches. Um, I actually did not even measure the board because, like I said, I just wanted the overall length of 62 inches. But measure it for you real quick here, just in case you wanted to be very specific like I have. And it's 38 inches. So this is a 38 inch piece of 2x4. And it's going to be butted up to the center here. And I also cut myself two more. Three and a half by three and a half blocks. They are perfectly square because that's what the actual size of two by fours are. And they're gonna get wedged into here and here. This is gonna start strengthening the tongue of our implement. So we're gonna screw everything in from the back. All right, so I got my tongue connected. 
and I got my three and a half inch blocks. And you can see I got two screws in each one into this, and that does not make the tongue too strong because you're going to pull and it's going to pull out. So we have to reinforce that. Um, so my first reinforcement is I'm adding in a nice carriage bolt across everything through the tongue and out the other end. This is going to make our tongue pull across all three of these blocks into this board. For my next reinforcement of the tongue, I'm laying a two by four across and I'm bleeding. Huh. Uh, I'm laying a two by four across to the center of my tongue. That's the center, which is from back here to here. And um, took my pencil and I traced, drew a line in here to get the angle on that end. And I took my pencil and I drew across to get the angle here. And what I want is the end end of this board to go across my entire seam. So you can see my line. And I want it to go across one, two, three pieces so I can screw in and strengthen this corner, corner joint even more and screw it to the tongue so on turns and pulling we're distributing the weight on the tongue and securing it um, with a lot less wiggle move movement with a lot less wiggle movement so it's all cut and that's how i'm going to attach it with my three inch screws i've been using for this whole project but before i do I'm going to take another, the last of the two by four pieces, and I'm going to make a tracing of this because I want to make an exact copy for the other side. So I'm going to lay it down and I'm going to trace it now. There's one. And there's my other mark. And now I'm going to cut that and have two identical boards. All right, so our tongue is attached. And you can see I attached it here. So I grabbed two into this side beam, two into this side beam, and then one into our block, which we had blocked there. So we had the same situation happen here. So now we got it grabbing at all the locations in our joint to strengthen this up. And then I did the, we traced it, made a copy. The copy's on the other side, so you can attach it at the same spot, like so, you can see. And again, I attach it to all. So, our next thing is to strengthen up this tongue even more, because a lot of the pressure is going to be on the tongue pulling the back of my ATV. So, we cut triangles roughly in the back there to strengthen up the back corners, and we did two of those. So I went back to my, you know, three quarter inch plywood and uh, I cut two matching triangles. And what am I going to do with them? Well, on the tongue, right here, let me come around. I mark the center and I mark the center. And I kind of try to follow the same angle to just make it look aesthetically pleasing. And I made a two foot two foot triangle on the same angle as that and I'm going to lay it in and I'm going to screw it along the two by four here and up the tongue two by four there so when you pull again you really strengthen up and pulling from the base two by four here not just from the board with a couple of screws in all right let me screw that in and I have two of them do one on the top one on the bottom all right, for aesthetics, more so than strength, I decided to cut off one small triangle um, to match the way that looks over there, and to mark my top, just to give it a little more visual evenness here. And uh, that's gonna get screwed in there. It'll add a little bit to the strength, sure, by, the by putting something on the joint, but this was more for visual for me. All right, screw that in. All right. So that's kind of where we're at now. And what I'm going to do is, just as I did the front triangle here, just for looks, 
across the back. I'm going to take the last of the three quarter inch plywood I had laying around. And I'm going to make a one, one little four and a half inch, four and a half inch strip that I'm going to screw in and put right across the back here just to maybe catch some dirt or stuff coming off the back of the cult attacker. Also, it will strengthen up the joint just a bit. All right, let's screw that sucker in. Coming to the end of our frame build, we're now on the far end of the tongue. And uh, just like we reinforced the holes where the axle will go through, uh, the tongue is gonna take a lot of pull from my ATV from this point. So again, uh, this was a design I saw online and I'm taking this, uh, I'm going to drill a hole to put a bolt through to strengthen up the tongue here so it doesn't separate the wood from the pulling. So we're gonna come back to our buckets now. Still need to finish off what's happening with them. So I laid it into the chassis and centered it out as best as possible. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but still made it centered. And I marked with the black marker the line where I want that to go, where I want that to stick out of the buckets. All right, guys, so I took my buckets apart. And my mark is just under two inches on both sides. And I have the last bucket here sitting on a nice, uh, you know, two by six. So that's going to give me my, basically my inch and a half space that I want. Like I said, this is going to be perfect. And I have my bucket, uh, my PVC, two, two and a half inch PVC coming out the bottom of the, uh, the bucket hole now. I have sealant because I want to seal this permanently in its spot and I'm using going to use the top bucket that has the lid to hold it in place once I got the seal on the bottom. I'm using the top bucket that I slide over the top just to hold this at a perfectly straight up and down angle because I want this as straight as possible. And now we're going to seal this up inside the bucket. You could be kind of messy with this. It's, uh, you know, not really gonna matter on the inside. The, the main thing you want is that it is sealed. So I have it all caked in there nice. And I'm gonna slide this right on the top. And right in there to hold it so it sits level while that dries. So now I know that this is exactly straight up and down and will work and roll nice and smooth for when I'm done. All right, let's let that dry. You just watched me uh, take the lower bucket that has the fake corrugations on it and put a whole bunch of sealant in there with this pipe sticking up uh, an inch and a half out the bottom. We marked it, we want it to stick out a little bit. So that's why it's sitting on the two by sixes. And now this bucket represents the lowest part of the, the bottom. Now we're going to take all the rest of our buckets with some liquid nail. And we're going to coat the whole coat around these buckets and start stacking them in there to permanently seal them all together. So you could be messy with this. Just put a little nice little random bead around everything just to really prevent these from pulling apart. That's what I'm gonna do. And then gently, without knocking over your PVC pipe here, we're gonna slide them back in and let this all become one solid thing. So there's that one. Here we go. All right, guys, I mocked up what this would look like coming to the back of my ATV here. 
and I drilled another hole through our reinforced tongue. We reinforced the tongue with the bolt again so it doesn't split. And I got myself just a quick hitch pin and 14 inches of chain, which was really cheap. This is galvanized 5 16 inch chain because I want it to go around my, the ball of my trailer hitch on my ATV really easy. Drill the hole. I'm gonna run this through. Loop this right around. I got myself a 20 cent washer just to make sure it doesn't walk off. Clip goes on. It'll go around the ball of your ATV like so. And boom, you're, you're pulling, you're in business. And that's how we're doing that. All right, while well, I'm letting my buckets dry up and harden, and, and I got the chain all set up for the tongue, I'm all ready uh, to kind of get this thing going. Um, so I'm going to paint this sucker while I'm waiting for the buckets to dry. Here we go, guys. Phase two. I know up until this point, we've had the roller implement. And I think maybe some of you are saying, well, what is the weight going to be? How are you going to get weight in this to actually crush crops and do what this Coulter Pack is supposed to do? Well, that's what we're here today to do. We're actually going to fill that roller implement with concrete. So here's our roller implement thus far. A little bit of pipe sticking out. The bucket top on that end. Then on this end, we have a little pipe sticking out on the bottom. And, you know, it's all sealed with silicone. We have concrete. I'm using just a fast set concrete. This is just got to add weight and hold, hold our bucket structure, structure together. It doesn't have to, you know, hold the house. So fast setting sackcrete is what I'm going to work with. And one of the little things I thought about is how am I going to stand this up on end with three inches of pipe sticking out of the bottom? Um, and fill it with concrete without disrupting that. So my thought was I was going to dig a small hole in the ground and set this up in the ground, but there's still a lot of winter happening outside and temperatures are not warm enough to work with concrete. So I'm doing this in the basement of the ranch in the best fashion that I can. We have a baby pool. And I built this little widget out of four by fours and a leftover piece of three quarter plywood from this build. And as you can see from the hole, I'm going to stand this unit up right in here and work with the concrete here in my basement where the temperature is above 40 degrees, letting this fast concrete set. So here are the tools for the next piece. I got my electric drill with the mixing paddle and bucket, concrete, and we just need water start mixing this up. So let's get going. Concrete's in. Here we go, fill to the top. Uh, a little bit of a tip. Let's cover this as you're pouring it in because you don't want the concrete to go down your bearing shaft and, you know, cause problems. So, as you can see, nice thick, not too soupy. We want to pack that, pack that like that. Again, this tape was just to prevent pouring concrete down into your bearing shaft. And cleaned off the threads. And screwing on my top, this screw is on, which keeps everything perfectly straight. I'm gonna give it one last little shake, and now we let that sit there and cure. Sacrete says about 30 minutes, but I'm gonna leave this here for quite some time. All right, guys, keep watching. We're here, concrete's done, and now we're gonna set this Colter Packer up and get it together. So we're coming to the end to this build. I appreciate you hanging in there for as long as this has been going on.
full of concrete, all dry. I let it stay standing up for two weeks. It's completely solid. You can see sealed in with the lid. Back end siliconed and it's the bottom of a bucket. As you saw, we siliconed together all the buckets. So they are one solid giant unit full of concrete. We have our pole here, which is our axle. So now we're going to load this into our frame. The implement's there. Pipe is gonna get fed through. Yep. And you can see the implement is in and now I'm just going to cut off the excess pipe and put some pins in some cotter pins to hold it from walking out so the holes drilled pipes here and now I got this beautiful cotter pin I'm gonna run it through cotter it on push that tight I'm gonna give myself a little room there I'm going to come to this side, do the same, and cut the pipe. All right, cutting the pipe. Here we go. Guys, I'm gonna stop right there. As you can see, it works and it's built. This video is long enough, so I don't wanna drag this out any further. So stick around, and I'm gonna be using this in a future video on the crops on my food plot. Thanks for watching. I hope this helps if you decide you wanna build an implement like this, a cultipacker for you to use to crush crops and push seed into the ground. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, and I know this was a long one. This is not usually my style, but this one worked out that way. And I hope you get out there and maybe build one of these and plant a food plot this year.